What's up guys, we're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shu. Dot com, and we are here for a movie that I'm quite excited about, your Hollywood wifey. Constance Wu. Michelle Yao. Starring in. Crazy Rich Asians. And we're not talking about James Shu, we're talking about a movie called Crazy Rich Asians. Um, a movie that's gotten a lot of love, a lot of praise. You know, really kind of being hailed for a movie to really bring the Asian American experience kind of to the forefront. Uh, one thing we've known and noticed, and anyone can really tell that the Asian American uh, actors don't always get the forefront, they don't always get the leading roles, and we don't really get all Asian cast. That's kind of something rare. Since the Joy Luck Club, really. Yeah, and the Joy Luck Club is a, a really good movie, but a oh, movie that good, kind of really divided it's... some people. Uh, there was a lot of criticism towards that movie, there was a lot of praise for that movie, mostly because of uh, it. F some people argue that it fell through stereotypes, some people just felt that it was a, a, too much of a harsh look at the culture. Well, a lot of the Asian moms and f parents were like, that's not us, and all the kids were like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Sorry. no, and, that, and that's kind of the thing, right, is, is that it, the Asian culture, when it is being brought in a kind of serious light, unfortunately, the Asian, the Asian characters in movies have always kind of been played t stereotypically, sometimes by, by, Nerd. White, by white people. They're nerds. Oh. You know, Breakfast at Tiffany's? Breakfast at Tiffany's, obviously the very famous, like, you know, bad accent. And it, yes. I mean, even up to the 80s with Short Circuit, Hi, with, with short circuit too. And you're laughing. You know when people <laughs> like loathe that? Uh, short Circuit 2, we had, you know I mean? It, we've seen this again and again. And even now you could find movies that like, you know, they'll play the, the dun dun dun, like it's, that's where they go. And it's I'm just so cheap, right? You just did. I, no, I'm just, I'm reiterating what, what I've seen, you know? And, and it's, and sometimes you're just kind of like, really? Like that's where we're going? Or, or the, or the R jokes, you know? Like it's just kind of like, come on. Like there is just so much more like to explore in this culture. And, and this movie obviously is getting hailed for one that kind of opens that door. I loved it because it's like, it was at 100, then it's down to like 98%, 96, yeah, 96. 97, yeah. and then I saw a meme saying, uh, now the Asian mom's like, you can do better, 4%. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I get you know. It's true, though. So, okay, so obviously we can't really talk about this movie without talking about kind of the Asian experience, the Asian culture. Uh, as a person, as an Asian American, which you are. Do you feel like, were you excited to see this on the basis of the fact that like, you want to see your kind of culture represented on screen, or do you not care? Both. <laughs> I don't care, yeah. honestly. I'm just being You're honest. You're not against it, yeah. but... But when they said it was Kamel, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all there, I'm there. They, there was a, a Filipino movie that came out called um, The Debut, yeah. and when that came out when I was in high school, I was there in the theater, and I was like, representing, I'm not even <laughs> Filipino, and I was like, let's go, and that was pretty cool, but, and... The, uh, there's a lot of Asian singers that you've never heard of, like uh, One Voice, or they may, they actually went mainstream a little bit, but One Voice and there was a, another. Well, another I just don't know music, so I feel like no, that, that's just, okay. Now you just stereotype me to not know Asian stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I'm always proud. I'm like, all right, good yeah. job, you know. But I'm more of the guy. But honestly. you were never the guy like demanding, like no. yeah. But but I'm probably, and I'm sure we'll get a lot of hate for this. But I'm the guy that you know, if you don't feel represented in whatever it is, then freaking. Work hard at it, and if you aren't getting your chance, then make your own. Well, and and I think I think in a way that um, you know the Asian uh, you know culture with with cinema always worked in other countries and smaller movies, and I think that that existed, and they did. You know, I believe a lot of Asian actors and filmmakers really did kind of build their own path, and you know, obviously making movies with the China market, lower budget films. But the, it's it's you know, obviously there are some obstacles rather than just being able to do. It. And I think part of that is just getting more Asian filmmakers in in the industry. Not saying there's not, but there's obviously these boundaries and people who are in the industry, and it's getting more of them into the industry to get more actors in front. James Wan is killing it for the Asian. Yeah, community. absolutely. Uh, John M. Chu doing it with Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it's it's hard to deny. Joe, it's, Joe. it's hard to not deny the fact that there is just kind of this lack of presence when yeah. it comes when it comes to movies, especially in America. And like we already kind of talked about, it just doesn't have a good rep. So it's always kind of good to see a movie like. I, and I keep thinking of Coco because Coco was a movie yeah. that really people celebrated. Like, oh, I'm a Hispanic, I'm Latino, and this movie really felt like it kind of celebrated my culture. Did you and, feel that way? Uh, well, I didn't really connect to Coco as much as everyone else did. Uh, I mean, there are of course things that that you like, oh man, that, that is something close to home, that's something I relate to. Uh, but, and, and you know, obviously Mexican Americans or Mexicans in general are more, at least on American screen than Asians culture. So I think for a lot of Asian, uh, Asian people, it's just really great to kind of see that, that change, you know? And um, 
And I mean, I'm excited. I mean, I love the cast. Uh, we have a lot of people going in that we know. We have, you know, we have Constance, who's someone that I love. I've been watching her fresh off the boat. I was Michelle introduced Yow. to her. She's absolutely hilarious. Michelle Yao. I mean, she's come on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the OGs, you know. I met her one time at uh, Did Game, you? GameWorks. Oh, wow. She was uh, rock climbing with Jackie Chan and Zing Zai for uh, Rush Hour. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Some, some really talented cast here. Um, but, you know, going in, this is obviously not a drama. It's not like kind of a serious heavy hitter like Joy Luck Club was. Romantic comedy. But, yeah, so you have the romantic comedy side going in. You know this I is do, your type buddy. of movie. So what did you think of Crazy Rich Asians? I really enjoyed this movie. I'm a big fan of... Uh, Pretty Woman, big fan of My Best Friend's Wedding, these type of films. Anything with the love aspect, I'm a fan. Rom-coms, yeah. Yeah, rom-coms, and I really, I enjoyed this film a lot. It wasn't, uh, for sure, it's not going to be a top 10 for me. Uh, it's not a 10 out of 10 I'm for shocked. me. You know, but I really enjoyed it. You know, my girlfriend came and we're uh, smirking and laughing, and we're smirking and laughing because a lot of the stereotypes, these Asian stereotypes throughout the film, yeah, you know, they, they that's exactly how it is. There's a, there's a one scene where the boyfriend, they're, they're in Singapore already, and the boyfriend's introducing, oh, this is my uh, mom's best friend, or these are my auntie, and da-da-da. And then they do it from the POV mm -hmm. style, so you see directly on the face, and then the reactions of what they do and say are, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what we say for some So reason. even though they're technically kind of like cliche stereotypes, they felt very real. For you. me, they were uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure not only you, you know, I mean, that's it, it, and it's kind of interesting to talk about it and like assume like again you can't watch this movie and assume like oh the whole entire Asian culture is this way this is the truth like just because this movie's crazy for Asians and it's obviously trying to open doors and talk more about a culture it doesn't mean you assume everything is true and it's always that's what it is for the entire culture right but um, it's it's good to have that conversation here that you felt that there was a lot of I mean a lot of people there's um, May May Long who's a filmmaker out here she's a UNLV professor she had this really great piece uh, I believe on Channel Three uh, explaining how this movie we kind of really connected her and how she felt that it was really Indian and you know just talk about Asians Asian and American cinema which is really really interesting so well, it seems a, that a lot of people are saying that there is a lot of authenticity there is there's another scene too where they're like uh, oh the mom's like you have to wear red because it's da 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 and I'm like yeah that's what the that's what the parents Fortune say and good luck yeah. yeah and then there's another scene where the grandma is um, basically dumbing down Michelle Yao and the way she made it, the her daughter, dumpling. Yeah, the daughter, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's because that's, that's, you know, I don't think my mom's ever going to watch my review. So, <laughs> kind of, but yeah, that's, that's exactly how it was in our home where yeah. it's, it's like you can never do good enough and you get so, and I'm not dumbing that. Which, and, oh, and, I guess I am, but I'm just saying that that's exactly, for me, it hit, that's exactly how it was at And see, my and house. I think it's, it's kind of a stereotype <clears throat> in the sense that like, you, when you hear you hear these Asian stereotypes, it's always the the disciplinary parents who are like the B is not good enough. You need it, it is, but it seems like there is some truth to that. And like most stereotypes, there is some kind of truth to the. Well, there's no why it's a stereotype. You know, I, <laughs> I know you don't. So a lot of us don't want to hear that, but <laughs> well, you know, where do you think so, they come from? To, to something, to some degree, of course. Uh, but it was really kind of interesting watching this movie tackle some of that heavy stuff with the lighter tone. Uh, I mean, I think there are some really heavy moment, moments in the movie, particularly in kind of in that dumpling scene where you kind of just have these very small throw and, and what's so crazy it's not like this really heavy dramatic like oh those dumplings are and, and like have this moment of shame it's very just off the cuff like very natural off the cuff like sentence she says but you can immediately tell like just how that affects everyone in the room everybody in the room not just her and they um, always do that crap too <laughs> like the whole family would be together and yeah. someone has to say something so negative and you're supposed and everyone's there and you're supposed to just be like oh, okay they're doing it again <laughs> I mean, no man, I, and I felt that this movie did that kind of real. But like, obviously, Joy Luck Club took this uh, relationship and, 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 and you know, immigrant moving to America and, and people back and really, really heavy and very dramatically. Where this movie is able to do that, tackle that, but also, I mean, on, on the basis of this movie, you have a very charming. Oh, time out! And then all the scenes where the aunties and stuff are acting extra happy and stuff like that. No, that's not overacting. That's actually how a lot of Asian or. The family Your I'm tradition. around, a lot of the Chinese family I'm around, yeah, they act just well, like that. A lot of reviews that I've read and a lot of people who really spoke about this movie who were did relate and did you know, also, you know, kind of argue for its authority. I'm sure there are people who are going to be like, that's not my experience at all. You know, but that's every, but that's the kind of thing, though, is that there are people who've had this experience. And if you, if you alone were the only guy who's like, no, this movie I relate to as an Asian American because this is what's like my household's like, then that's it. Like that, you know, is representation. And you shouldn't be shunned because you feel that way opposed to someone who's like, no, that's not how my household was, so it's wrong. Um, well, lucky you. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's good to open up this conversation. And again, like to go back to Coco, 
people celebrated that movie because it just introduced people to new cultures it kind of reflected on a culture and celebrated it and i think this movie does it well uh and in a way that it kind of on the basis is a very light you know charismatic cute movie that you could smile at and laugh at though i do think you probably could cut 15 20 minutes really my own complaint just to make it a little bit tighter uh, but there is some pretty heavy stuff in here. I mean, there's some pretty intense moments in the movie that are kind of heartbreaking, but also kind of, uh, in, the, in the opposite terms, are also very funny and silly and ridiculous that do kind of play with stereotypes still. And then you have uh, the more kind of um, really, like, beautiful moments in the movie. Um, to go... So there was some parts you thought, you th also thought were unnecessary. Yeah, yeah well, look, in... Yes. Okay. And there was another part too where the Michelle Yao is telling the girlfriend from New York, uh, Constance Wu. Yeah. Was she was basically they were basically saying it's like, oh, you're not our kind, you know. And so it's like a different. It's that type, it's a racism. It's an being, immigrant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a racism, right? Yeah. It's, you're being. She's being racist against. Even though they're both. Well, I guess Constance Wu. I think they were saying she was well, Chinese. Well, she, she. They were saying. Yeah. They, no, they were. Yeah. They actually they are saying were saying she's Chinese. Yeah, because her mom like has a whole conversation about her being Chinese. <clears throat> the whole argument is that because she's an immigrant, she's not one of her kind. real. The yeah. real. Legit and. Yeah, that's authentic. true too. It's because like a lot of people like if you don't think that Asian people can be racist to their own their own, you know, yeah. it's like oh yes they can. You Which know, we also see in many different cultures, you know, yes. there's always that kind of distension. Um, yeah, so I mean there's obviously a lot of that stuff that the, the, those movies are balancing and uh, um, you know, I, I think this movie does it quite well. Yeah, and the thing I didn't like though for me was the scene where the, the, the cheating boyfriend like I, I felt that you, that entire every segment of that part wasn't even necessary in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like I, there, I don't see any value in how that added to the story. But then you had some comments that. Well, I think that you, you have that character for for a few different reasons. First of all, most of the people in the movie who are from the young family are kind of rich and snobby and aren't very very nice. So you kind of need someone besides our one of our main protagonists to be kind of a good person and to show like, oh, we're all not like this. We're all kind of down to earth, and and she's that character. And I think the idea also to kind of reflect the opposite of a relationship where she married a person who wasn't from money, who didn't have money, and like that kind of expectation to live up. I mean. This movie explores all these ideas of living up to a standard. Yeah. And in that way, that, that, that male character, her husband, instead of living up to a standard or trying to say that him himself is a standard that needs to be upheld to, he went the opposite way, you know? And I think it's interesting to see how um, her mother, I believe it was her mother also, um, held that standard to Constance Wu, but obviously we never see hold a standard to him. And she only held the standard of him just being a good husband. She never expected one. She supported him. And he doesn't hold up to the just a decent person standard. And I think kind of through those terms of just being able to look at it from different perspectives is why it's, it's kind of valuable. You know, and maybe I didn't like it because I found him so weak. That's so <laughs> pathetic. You know what I mean? Like, there's people struggling, and this dude is like, it's like so pathetic to me. I mean, and I know it's well, a real and, thing. And, and, I know well, it's a real thing. Here's the thing I will say is pride is a very, very yeah. intense thing. Yeah. And that's even, and that's, and that's incredibly shown in this movie. Pride is a big thing. Yeah. I mean, why do we not want Constance Wu in the family? Because of the pride of our family, of our name. She could tarnish the name because she's not one of us. And I mean, like, if it's that big, it's, it's not surprising that pride could go the other way. And I think that's kind of a bigger reason why that those scenes work. I don't I'm not saying they're absolutely necessary to make the movie um, understandable or like logical, but I think that kind of opens up that theme and maybe helps you get the perspective of like, okay, well, this doesn't only work as as a poor person trying to marry rich. Obviously, there's vice versa. You could kind of tell that story too. Um, I, I know I, you like that one scene. Where... I think you cut the bachelor scene for sure. Like, I don't think that scene was was beneficial at all. Just kind of annoying. Like, they had this kind of really crazy character who liked the party you know I think there's some scenes there that are just kind of weak and there's a, a bit of a lull with a few of the parties that are going on but I'm assuming they kept that in just because they needed them Crazy to rich. say say it again Crazy Rich yeah uh, that but um, <laughs> also they needed to insult they wanted them to know that even though he's the good the best looking the and he's gonna be the future ruler, he still has the pressure of everyone else yeah and everyone's clowning him and and, and I was telling I'm you assuming. we were kind of we, we obviously had a little bit of a conversation before we got to doing the review a little one. Uh, I think another really interesting thing about this, and again, you know, this is <clears throat> watching someone who is trying to understand what this movie is trying to say about the culture. Uh, I'm not saying this is about the culture or what I'm saying about the culture, but what this movie is saying about culture. And I think it really explores this really interesting um, 
theme of loneliness that even, and that goes back to the couple that you weren't a fan of, that even though she's in this relationship and has a child, she still lives in this kind of isolated world. And just how Constance Wu is isolated from the family and how in that scene, while I don't think it's necessary, you could kind of show his isolation even with he's with his closest people around him, he's still kind of alone because they constantly fight him back and all that um, judging and standard and like just all the pressure that everyone puts on everyone in this movie which feels like it's obviously trying to say about the culture in general the pressure that they put on each other kind of makes it an isolating thing and I think that's what goes back to the Joy Luck Club which they really explore the idea of like oh more, you are alone yeah. and you are not you know going to be accepted in this culture and I think that's another really interesting aspect of the movie and um, granted that wasn't said in the past yeah. versus my favorite today. part of the movie though on a much lighter note is uh, the moment Constance Wu, Wu's mom stands up from the, ma the mahjong. mahjong table and looks <laughs> looks uh, her right in the eye. Michelle Yao. Michelle, Michelle Yao. Uh, you know, Michelle Yao obviously really, really hurting Constance Wu. And, you know, I'm waiting for her just to get in her face and say something. Nope, nope. She lets her daughter take care of it. And then as her, da as her daughter, Constance Wu's walking out after showing her up at the game, she stands up looks her directly in the eye, and you could just hear all the things she's saying to her, and I just thought it was a great moment. Just like a, yeah, get her, you know? But at the same time, and I think that's another thing that really I works in this boxing. movie. I saw you boxing. Yeah, it was just like, oh yeah, get her. But at the same time, Michelle Yao is never a character that you're like, God, she, I mean, she, yes, of course, she's obviously an antagonist in the movie and causing all those problems and quite mean at some times. But then you, will uh, never you be almost, good enough for my you daughter almost immediately son. understand that that is just something that is kind of passed down because she is almost, she got it from she, grandma. and she obviously even speaks about like the time that she's not good enough and how she was given a different ring, which obviously is, is used later in the movie, which has a nice touch. Um, and I like that that there was like no big moment at the end where they kind of hugged and like we're like all right we're cool now like really it's just a look and that's it. It's a look of and it's a look I and approve. it's not like and it's not even really an I approve. It's a look. They make eye contact and you think she's gonna give her the big like head nod and she just doesn't. She walks away and like it kind of goes back to her saying it's gonna take years for you to really be accepted. So I think though in no sense the movie holds true and it's not all like happy cheeky even though pretty much everything else ends up in a happy cheeky way. Good stuff, man. I mean, it's it's good stuff. I always love when we could like go and I mean, I always say like a lot of people. You know, it's interesting. Aquafina, Aquafina, yes. Ocean's, who, 8. Ocean's Eight, which I've not seen her in. So this is my kind of and first. She's a rapper. First real experience of Aquafina. Um, I thought she was fine. I think sometimes she doesn't work in the movie. Sometimes she does. I think sometimes she's a little bit over the top. Same thing with Dr. Ken. I love Dr. Ken. You know, he's the man, but sometimes he's just a little bit over the top. He still made me laugh in the movie. But honestly, I think- Have you ever watched a show where he answers questions about dentistry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Doc, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he's the man. Like, in real life, that dude's the man. Yeah, in real life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In real life, he's and the man. And obviously, Dr. Ken, the show, is kind of based off his mm -hmm. life and him eventually meeting his, his wife, who's also an actor and a doctor. Um, I mean, it's pretty impressive. But, uh, you know, I think the funny, I mean, it was all these really side characters who really didn't play a role that had me laughing the entire movie. There's a great thing at the very end, since we're kind of talking about spoilers, when she's finally getting proposed to on a plane, and there's just some random lady following the whole Constance through the entire time. I was just eating it up, man. I was cracking up. There's some really good stuff in here. But overall, a you'll have a fun time. Yeah, a, a fun 100%. time. At the worst, you know, even if you want to throw, I know some people are like, I don't want to go see a movie about culture. You know, like, if you just want to throw all that out the window, you're going to get a cute love movie. Right, yeah, but there's a lot of layers to it, and I think that's kind of it's good to celebrate cultures. You know, as I was saying, most people say movies. The great thing about them is they're an escape. I never looked at them that way. I always looked at movies as a way to understand the, the people around me, the world around me, the people that I'll never get to experience or be like. You know, you get to really go in someone else's shoes. It teaches you empathy, and I think this is a perfect example of that. I love it. We also did a review for Mark Wahlberg and Ronda Rowdy Rousey in Mile Twenty Two and whether or not we should watch the movie. Yeah, make sure to go check out that review. We also, next week, are going to be back here at AMC Town Square at 10 o'clock, so make sure to join us no matter what we're seeing. What are we watching? My, uh, the Happy Time Murders. Yes, the most, <laughs> one of the most perverted films uh, I've seen. Like, if you thought Ted was perverted. Possibly. We've only I, seen trailers. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, hopefully all the funny parts isn't in the trailers, yeah. and then it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Anything, which could be a very which, popular Which kind of like looks this. like it's following in the direction of Team America, which used, you know, marionette dolls mm -hmm. or whatever, the puppets, I guess, uh, to, to kind of do this really raunchy, crazy stuff. Now we're going to the Muppets. Nothing from your childhood is safe. 
So. Absolutely nothing. I'm a big Jim Henson fan. I love all the Muppet stuff, so I'm excited on that aspect. But I'm sure this movie is just going to be quite crude and rude. But I love me some Melissa Carthy when she's in a good movie. Um, and no, I'm this no is Sesame, one. All Street. Ooh. Yeah, I hope I hope it's not the case where it's like oh, all the all the funny scenes are just the fact that the like the Muppet is cursing or the Muppet is having sex. Like I hope that's not like the, the main jokes of the movie because that's just kind of weak. I get it; it's shock factor, but let's get somewhere interesting here. I love it. Uh, Join us here next week for comment it. below. Let us know. Absolutely. Jason Simmons, Comics No Rants. The Film Lawyer's website.